Hey there, it's Jennifer from the blog, The Everyday Farmhouse. Today, we're gonna to be making lard soap. So if you've never made soap before, I have a post and a video on beginner soap making. I have a post on why you would wanna make your own soap. There's also a video and a post on making tallow soap. So you might be confused, a lot of people are, what's the difference between lard and tallow? Um, some people use them interchangeably and they are two different products. Tallow is rendered fat from cattle or grazing animals, deer, you know, beef cattle, uh, things like that. Whereas lard comes from pigs. So when you use fat from an animal, you're actually using something that's sustainable because you're using all of the animal. You're using things that would otherwise be thrown away or wasted. So for us, we raise pigs and our butcher will actually uh, render the lard for us, which is, saves me time and effort. Um, for our beef, they don't render the tallow. And so I've done that myself. I have a post teaching you how to uh, render tallow. And then I have a post on making soap with tallow. So you can check those out as well. So let's get started. I'll let you know everything you need to make this great lard soap. So there's a few things to consider when you start to make soap. And number one is safety. You are using lye, which is a caustic ingredient, and you can get burned with lye. Uh, don't be afraid of it though. If you respect what it is and you take precautions, you shouldn't have any problems. I like to protect my work area with some thick cardboards so that I don't burn my butcher block countertop. I like to wear long sleeves when I'm making soap. I wear rubber gloves. I actually use nitrile gloves. I like those that are rated for chemical use. And I always wear safety glasses or goggles because it's possible that it'll splatter. I, I have splattered it. And so I try to take those precautions because I know that those things are almost inevitable with me. Maybe you're more careful and cautious than I am uh, and good for you. <laughs> so anyway, start with those safety precautions. There's also a few basic tools that you'll need and supplies for making soap. The first thing that you'll want would be a digital scale. You'll also want a digital instant read thermometer. You'll want a soap mold or, you know, plastic containers. You can, you can come up with things. If you absolutely don't have the money to spend on a mold, you can come up with plastic containers or whatever to pour your soap batter into. So you want a digital scale, digital thermometer, um, a mold. The other thing that you'll want would be an immersion blender. An immersion blender makes mixing the soap so much easier and it just blends it really nicely and makes the whole process easier. You'll, well, of course, want the safety equipment that I mentioned and you'll want um, some measuring bowls, uh, spoons and a rubber spatula, things that maybe you're only gonna use for soap making, um, older spatulas or that sort of thing that you don't want to use again for food probably. So that's what you're gonna need. Uh, next, I'll tell you the ingredients and then we'll get started in the process. So for making lard soap, you're just gonna need a few extra ingredients besides the lard. Lard does make a good soap. Probably our great grandmothers made soap from just lard and the lye. I like to make kind of a more modern twist on lard soap and I add coconut oil and castor oil. Those both give the soap uh, sudsing or bubbling qualities. I've made it before and my husband said, eh, it's a little bit slimy. He likes it to be a little bit uh, more bubbly when he uses it. So I'm, I added those ingredients. So to start, you'll need 30 ounces of rendered lard so that it should be odorless. And then you'll need three ounces of coconut oil and two ounces of castor oil. You want your percentage of castor oil to stay fairly low, otherwise the soap can get sticky, but that's, I used as much as I could without making a sticky soap. And then you'll need 10.63 ounces of uh, filtered water and 4.5 or 4.75 ounces of sodium hydroxide, which when you mix with water makes lye. So after you have your work area set up, the first thing you're going to do is measure out your ingredients. I like to measure everything out, put it in individual cups so that I don't make any mistakes as I go along. So uh, I like to measure out my fats and oils, put those in separate containers, 
It also makes it easier when you go to measure so that you're not having to clear out your digital or your yeah, digital scale. So I've measured out my oils and fats, and then I've measured out my sodium hydroxide and my filtered water. So first I'm going to put all my fats and oils into the pot and I use a little hot plate. You can do this on your stove. I just do it so that I have it all in one place and it's just easier for me to access everything. That's totally your choice though. While the fats are melting, I then carefully pour the sodium hydroxide into the measured water. Now for this, you definitely want to have on your safety glasses, have on your long sleeves and your gloves. So always pour the sodium hydroxide into the water. Think of, people say to think of uh, snow falling on a lake. So try to remember that, otherwise it can heat up too quickly and cause, you know, I don't know about an explosion, but a, a quick chemical reaction that could um, make a, a big mess and to be, it could be dangerous. So just remember to do it in that order. So after you mix the sodium hydroxide into the water, you give that a stir, and then you're gonna set this aside. It's gonna heat up, to possibly around 200 degrees. I like to set mine near an open window and I'm gonna then let it cool off. Once the oils and fats are all melted together in our uh, liquid, take that off the heat and also set that aside. I like to also put that over near the window. That way they cool down at about the same rate. You want them to cool down so that they are within about 10 degrees of each other. I think that it works best if it's around 115 degrees um, it, it turns thicker, faster, the hotter it is. You don't want it too hot because then it, it, it reacts too quickly, but cool those both down to somewhere between 110 and 120 degrees, and then you'll bring them back together. So once your oils and fats are cooled down to around 115 degrees and your lye is cooled down to 115 degrees, you bring both of those ingredients back together. You're going to gently pour the lye into your oils and fats. Have your immersion blender ready, maybe tap it on the bottom to get some of the air bubbles out, and as you pour it in, turn your mixer on low and start mixing. You're trying to get to a stage called trace. This is when the batter thickens enough that if you were to lift it up and try to make trails on the top of the batter, it would leave marks. It would leave a little trail and that's called trace. You want this to get to a fairly uh, thin trace, kind of like a thin pudding. You don't want it too thick. If you're adding fragrance oil, this is also toward the end of this process when it's starting to thicken up, this is when you would add your two ounces of fragrance oil and that will speed up the process of trace. So you want to do that um, quickly and, and kind of toward the end as well. So once that's all done, you simply pour the batter into a mold. So whether you're using individual molds or a loaf mold or plastic or whatever you're using, you go ahead and pour that in there. Then you can spray it with 99% alcohol. So that would kind of helps to prevent the soda ash from forming, which is just harmless, but it's kind of a unsightly white residue that will form on your soap as it cures. So if you do that several times within the, like the first 15 minutes, it should help to prevent that. So you have two options after this. You can, if you're adding colorant, you would also add that in at the same time you add the fragrance. I didn't add any color to mine. If you're wanting bright, bold colors, that's when you would um, force this to go through what's called gel phase. You can either put it in the oven to make sure it stays hot enough or you can wrap it in towels. I don't very often add color to my soap. I usually skip this step. I've had my soap overheat, I've had it crack. Um, oftentimes I'm making soap that has milk in it. Whenever I have milk in it, I put it just in the fridge or the freezer so that it doesn't go through the gel phase. And you can read up on that and decide whether or not it's something you wanna do. If you want it to go through gel phase, at this point you would cover it and wrap it in a towel and set it aside for 24 hours. If not, you can just cover it and set it aside for 24 hours. And then the next day you come back, you unmold your soap, and then you cut it into bars and set it aside to cure for three to four weeks.
Hey, so I hope that you found this video helpful. I hope that it uh, inspires you to make soap from lard, a widely accessible ingredient, and it makes a really great soap. I added um, apple cider fragrance to mine. It smells amazing. No trace of animal smell or anything like that with it. It's a nice hard bar with the castor oil and the coconut oil. It lathers beautifully. And I feel confident that this is a great product to use in my home, on my children and myself. So thanks for coming along today. I hope you enjoyed making this soap and let me know in the comments if you have any questions and we'll see you next time.